In each of these problems, we're given two points and we need to find the slope of the line that passes through those two points. And we'll do that using two different approaches, one using a sketch of a graph and the other using the slope formula. So looking at our first example, we have the points 419 and 1243. And we need to find the slope of the line that passes through those two points. So one approach we could take is to draw a rough sketch of the graph. And the point 419 might be here. And the point 1243, uh, maybe it's up here. It doesn't need to be accurate. We just want to sketch to get an idea of where those points are. So the line would look something like this. All right, so this point here is 419. And this point here is 1243. So how do we find the slope of that line? Well, we need to find the rise and the run. So we need to figure out how much we went vertically and horizontally to get from one point to the next. So how much did we go up and how much did we go over? Well, we went up from 19, which is the Y value, to 43. And sometimes it helps if you just mark that on the Y axis. So we went from a Y value of 19 up to a Y value of 43. So how much is that from 43 to 19? Well, I guess we could just do 43 minus 19, and that gives us 24. So we could say that the rise is 24. We can write that on our graph too. And the run, while well, we went from an x value of 4 to 12. So again, I'll mark that on the x-axis. We went from an x value of 4 to an x value of 12. So we ran 8. 12 minus 4 is 8. So our run equals 8. And again, I can write that on the graph. So the slope is rise over run, which in this case is 24 over 8. Now you could reduce that fraction, see what goes into 24 and 8, but did you notice that 8 actually goes into 24? So we can get a really nice answer here by just doing 24 divided by 8, and that gives us a slope of 3. So how do we do this using the slope formula? Well, the formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is just the rise over the run. And again, m represents slope. And let's call this point 1, and we'll call this point 2. You can switch those. It makes no difference. You'll get the exact same answer. So for the numerator, we need to subtract the y values. So we have the y value for point 2, which is 43, minus that for point 1, which is 19, over the difference in the x value. So x value number 2 is 12, minus x value number 1, which is 4. And again, that gives us 24 divided by 8, which is 3. So the slope is 3. Okay, let's take a look at the next one here. We have 27, negative 6, and negative 15, 22. So I'll roughly plot those points for the first approach. 27, negative 6 might be perhaps here. And negative 15, 22 might be perhaps here. Okay, so again, just a rough sketch. So I'll draw that line that passes through those two points. Okay, and label them. So we have 27 and negative 6 and negative 15, 22. So negative 15, 22. All right, so we need the rise and the run, and I like to start at the left point and see how much I moved vertically and then horizontally to get to the right point. So it looks like we went down and then over. So how much? Well, we started at a Y value of 22 and went down to a Y value of negative six. So how much did we actually drop there? Well, from 22 down to negative six, 22 to zero would be 22 and another six would be 28. And we went down, so our rise is actually negative 28. So we'll write that over here, rise equals negative 28, and our run, well, we went from an x value of negative 15 for this point over to an x value of 27 for this point. So how far do we move if we went from negative 15 to 27? Well, you could subtract, you could do 27 minus negative 15, or you could realize that from here to here is 15 plus another 27 gives us a total of 42. So our run is actually 42. Okay, so our rise and our run. So our slope, 
would just be rise over run, which is negative 28 over 42. Now, can we reduce that fraction? Absolutely. Uh, both of these numbers are divisible by 14. Uh, is the biggest one. They're divisible by other numbers too, such as seven, but 14 is the largest number that goes into each of these. So if we divide the numerator by 14, we get two. And if we divide 42 by 14, we get three. And notice we had a negative divided by a positive, which gives us a negative result. And then we expected that because this line decreases from left to right. So it has a negative slope. And lastly, let's use our slope formula. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And again, I'll call this point 1 and I'll call this point 2, although you could switch those, it makes no difference. So y2 is the y value for point 2 minus y1, which is the y value for point 1, over x2, which is negative 15, is the x value for point 2, minus 27, which is the x value for point 1. And 22 minus negative 6, well, that's the same as 22 plus 6, so that's 28 and negative 15 minus 27 is negative 42. We can reduce this fraction again, 28 and 42 are both divisible by 14. It's the largest number that goes evenly into both of those. So we end up with 28 divided by 14 is two, 42 divided by 14 is three, and we had a positive divided by a negative. So again, we get our negative slope of two thirds. And that's it.